Hello, hello, welcome back to more Let's Play Diablo 2, soon to be Diablo 3. Oh, my mercenary's alive. You're probably wondering what the hell happened. Well, my game crashed when I was recording just a little bit ago, so this is my second attempt, but it still saved from where I was. So I had recorded, I had used my one talent per act, as you see my stuff is repaired. I sold some stuff, I found this ring out there when I was fighting, and I used my quest reward from killing Iswal for my two skill points, which I put into battle orders, because I want that to be really max level. So, basically, just to kind of show you where everybody's at, Mala is your healer, in case you haven't played before. Lazric over here, or Larzik, he's your blacksmith, and he gives you the first quest. A little bit of laggy here. Yeah, my computer crashed, that was kind of annoying. Deckard Kane, he's tagged along. Quelkick, he is your mercenary dude, and Neolithak, he's your gambler. Alright, so our first quest is to stop the siege uh, by killing Shank the Overseer in the Bloody Foothills. Which is where we're going right now. Here we go. Fun little fact, these guys right here that are already dead, you can use Find Potion on them. The time has come to cleanse my homeland. Indeed it is. And there are also mercenaries, well not mercenaries, NPCs out here fighting. Whoa, game. Calm down with that. There we go. So, like in true siege, there are actually catapults that are stationed throughout here. We don't have to destroy them, but they do shoot at us. So, the story-wise, what's going on, um, after Act 4, after we killed Diablo, the cutscene shows you um, destroying his soul stone, even though it technically didn't drop or anything. We took it back to the, the place where we destroyed it. I can't remember now. And we destroyed it in a cutscene. And then the cutscene for going to Act 5, once you have the expansion installed, it shows Mari or Marius talking to Tyrael in an insane asylum. He has been, he, that's what he was doing throughout all of Act, uh, through all of the original Diablo. He was the one narrating the story and such things. But, turns out, Marius had Bale Soulstone still. Well, he was supposed to go down to hell through the gates and the Durance of Hate, but he never did, like I talked about. Well, he kind of went insane, obviously, from all he experienced, and he went to, wound up in that insane asylum. So while he was there, then Tyrael went and found him. Well, it's not actually Tyrael, it was Bale. He wanted his Soulstone back. So he ends up killing Marius because he sees that he does have the Soul Stone and takes it. And then he comes here to Act 5 towards the World Stone is what he's after. I don't know if we know that technically yet. So, okay, spoiler alert. He's after the World Stone. Basically the World Stone's this big crystal that kind of controls the humans. They're called Nephilim here, like the Barbarian and the Rogue. Controls their powers. It limits them. I think I kind of touched on it before. So he's after it. He's trying to corrupt it or do something with it. We don't really know. And my hit rating, yeah, 69%. It's pretty crappy. We'll get better because we'll get a lot more experience in this act. Oh no, the guy died. Those death maulers are actually kind of dangerous. You see that they're shooting those tentacles out through the ground. Those tentacles ignore your defense, and I think they ignore blocking, too, if I remember right, but I could be wrong in that part. So, they can actually be somewhat dangerous if you're not too careful. Man, my mercenary's gonna get stuck a lot here. This place actually resembles a battlefield. Oh wow, did she go around? I'm proud of her! Hooray, look at that! Let's back up here so we can get her firing. So yeah, I did mention it when uh, episode started, but Diablo 3 has been confirmed, May 15th, two months from now. Hooray! It's been so long, I can remember playing Diablo 2 back on New Year's Eve for going into the year 2000. Ah, memories. That's so long ago. On the old crappy computer. In the family room. 
because I was a kid. And here's one of those catapults. Yeah, they basically just fling elemental damage. Basically, they're not any kind of threat whatsoever. Alright. Hey, hey, it's another NPC. Most of the beginning places of Act 5 are actually somewhat big. Um, this area is uh, straightforward. It's always the same. It's still a little bit large. We're probably almost halfway through, actually. I didn't clear out every single part of it because it actually expands pretty wide. But the next area and the area after it are pretty large. But then the Act 3 areas, kind of, or Act 3, the Act 5 areas kind of start to cut down a little bit in size. Ooh, we've got a big group here. They are also affected by Paladin Auras, too, so. They're a nice little meat shield if you're playing a gimped person like me. And up here should be. Yep. Yeah, we have a new enemy, Demon Gremlins. They are, teleport around and they shoot little firebolts. This is a uh, super unique. Where's his name? Dak Farron. He is cold enchanted. But these gremlins, they're pretty annoying. If you played the first Diablo, they'll remind you of the succubuses there. They would always teleport around. Oh, kill her. Kill him, mercenary. I don't want to be colded. Come on. There we go. Nothing. Like gauntlets. Oh, well, I'm not giving those up. Oh, barb club. That is another exceptional item. Or not except. Yeah, exceptional. I was thinking elite. No, we're not there yet. The only bad thing about this sword is it's really slow. Should be, yep, another catapult here. And yeah, we're making good progress. As long as they don't crash. Or have Diablo randomly show up and fight me. Man, he kicked my ass. But it was really just down to another case of lack of potions. Kind of like Duriel. A mercenary earlier was useless last time, because, well, she decided, oh, I'll stand in this big red lightning hose. Which I think I forgot to mention. It's, uh, that red lightning hose that he uses is half fire, half physical damage, I believe. And damn, is it powerful. I wonder if I could have, like, an army of these barbarian guys. There's no way. They die too fast. You would need to be a paladin with uh, the prayer aura. It's a healing aura. Just to keep these guys alive. Even then, I don't think that would work. Plus, you see, they don't really stick together too well. It's not like their damage is that good either. <laughs> Our experience is going okay. It will pick up in this act. We're gonna probably be around level 40 when we're done. So as you can see, we're gonna get a lot of levels. Just gonna take a little bit of time. Once we hit 32, once we start getting beyond that, it'll start to pick up our power. Since we'll be able to put po more points into battle orders, our life will go steadily up. Then I can start putting points in, um, more into Concentrate, too. Probably gonna put some more points in there soon. That way, its attack rating will be much better. Come and check. Surprisingly, our pathfinding's doing alright.
pick that up and use it. Oh yeah, I have this ring. And you suck. Don't die, little barbarian! Alright, nope, got some guys over here. Oh yeah, we can also now get normal diamonds, normal gems, and stuff like that to start dropping. So not too bad. Once you get, I think we can get some flawless gems to drop too. Once you get to Nightmare, you pretty much only get flawless, and sometimes you get regular. Diablo 3 is going to have, I think, like... 13 grades of gems. It's going to be insane. And each one is just an incremental increase. Uh, which I'm not too big on. Like, oh man, I have the next to best instead of the best. That doesn't bother me. Now, if you're a WoW player, you are a min-maxer. You know what that was like. People would pay insane prices on the auction house just for, you know, three better stats on one gem. It was crazy. But, people are willing to pay it. Ooh, we're almost over 500 life now. Can I even use fear on these guys? Yeah, not even close. Fortunately, this is when... The levels kind of crap out a little bit, like I was saying. And the enemies start skyrocketing. Yeah, we're going to be gaining more levels. But we're not really going to stay on pace with the enemies much anymore. Yeah, super healing potion. 640 hit points. Woo! Pretty much a full heal. Why, that is a full heal. <laughs> yeah, you might want back up, chick. Surprisingly, the en most of the enemies in Act 5 aren't too dangerous, except for maybe two different sets are. Which we'll get to later. You'll see. Since I have a feeling I'm not going to get there, in Act 5 and Nightmare in Hell, most of the enemies are actually rehashes of old enemies from different acts, except they've been upgraded and made more powerful, and more life and all that stuff. It's kind of interesting. I mean, Act 5 has... I mean, I think they have their own new enemies for everything. But yeah, they're not, except for like I said, one set, they're not too dangerous. So, I think they kind of took exception to that, and so they made a bunch of enemies from previous acts in Act 5 and Nightmare in Hell, but then they really, really buffed them a lot. So they made them, like, scary powerful. Which is kind of unfortunate, I guess. I don't know. Ooh, and we are there. A quest log popped up. Or at least we're close enough for it to pop up. Shink is, well, he's an overseer-type enemy, and basically what he can do is he can whip enemies into frenzies, which increases their damage and all that good stuff. He can also turn enemies into these exploder-type enemies, which you'll see. And then he can shoot those green globs, which is kind of annoying. Thankfully, he's not turning them into exploders. Those guys are actually... they actually do hurt. But Shank himself is nothing to really worry about. Ah, see, that's an exploder. Ow. Oh, that didn't hurt. And he himself is overstrong. Or, overstrong. Extra strong. There we go. Ooh, I got crit. Fun thing, though, is those exploders don't do anything if you have a mercenary hit them. They just blow up and that's it. 
Once you kill a shank, actually, pretty much everything else dies. It's kind of like Blood Raven. That's my hit rating. Ah. That doesn't say. Sucks is pretty much all it is. Come on, kill him! Yay! Yeah, then the whole place kind of goes bat shit crazy and starts stuff starts flying everywhere. And I can't do anything to his corpse either. Oh, okay. Maybe they weren't close enough to die. The siege is broken. Indeed it is, Mr. Barbarian. Yay, we got a level, level 28. Almost there. A couple more levels. Two, three, three points in dexterity because, my god. Need hit rating. Alright, so up here is, don't crash on me game, Frigid Highlands. And our first waypoint. So, this is where we're going to end this time. Next time we're going to start making our way through the Frigid Highlands. It's pretty big again. We'll see if we're able to get through most of it. Um, if not, I'll do it in two episodes. So, thanks for viewing, and I will catch you next time.